Hello, boys and girls. We're going to be looking again at primary sources. Do you remember what a primary source is? That's right. It's a source from a person who had personally witnessed an event or a time period. This time brings the date just a wee bit closer. We have August 11th, 1990, and I see that date, and right away I know that this particular primary source is called a diary. And it's similar to the one we read about the Oregon Trail, but let's also remember that this is definitely closer to our time period than the Oregon Trail was. This one is called A Dinosaur Named Sue. And as I'm reading, my purpose for reading is going to be thinking about what the central idea is or what the text is mostly talking about. Let's begin. I am sad that our dig is ending soon. I've been in South Dakota for 10 weeks. It's been such a great summer. Badlands National Park is amazing. We dug up many dinosaur bones. Some are more than 60 million years old. So right away, I know that the text is being told by a person. And this person has been digging in a national park. I can see by the photograph what the park looks like and the map below it shows me where it is. And I see it is right over here. And when I think about it, I am right over here somewhere and that is quite far. I'm going to read the caption. It says Badlands National Park is in South Dakota. So they showed us the national park sign and then they showed us the state it belongs in. Let's continue on. We're on to a new date, August 12th, 1990. What a day! One of our team members, Sue Hendrickson, found some big bones sticking out of a cliff. They were too gigantic to be anything but a dinosaur. Sue knew they were from a meat eater. In this part of the world, it could only be a T-Rex. And I know from my background knowledge that a T-Rex is absolutely ginormous or huge. And here we come across this word gigantic again, and we know what that word means. It means the same, huge. Sticking out of a cliff. Hmm, if they were at a park and in the picture, I noticed that there was a lot of mountains over here. So I'm thinking a cliff might be part of those rocks. How would you feel if you found a T-Rex? I imagine that the author felt pretty amazed and was in awe of it. Maybe even her mouth looked like something like this, like, Wow. Let's continue on and see what else happens. Sue brought back two pieces of bone to show Pete, our team leader. He agreed that they were T-Rex bones. We all went to see where they came from. So they thought it was a T-Rex, but then they took the bones to the boss or Pete who was the team leader and Pete probably has a little more background than they have as far as what 
type of dinosaurs they are. And he agreed that they were correct in saying that they were T-Rex bones. When we got there, we couldn't believe our eyes. More than 10 bones stuck out of the cliff. Pete thought that whole that a whole skeleton might be buried there. He named the dinosaur Sue after the person who found it. Wow, that is really cool. So they found more than 10 bones sticking out of the cliff. And Pete, the team leader, thinks that there might be a whole skeleton there. I'm thinking that the author included this picture to show us what Sue looked like. She was the person who found it. Okay, let's continue on. Our problem is that the bones are under almost 30 feet of dirt and rock. It's going to take a lot of work to remove it. Boy, I don't know how they could possibly get it out of rocks. In the picture, I see just how thick those rocks are and how big they are compared to the people who are sitting there on top of them. The caption says, Sue found bones sticking out of a cliff. I'm going to look really close and see if I can see any of the bones. Can you find any of them? Let's continue on to August 14th, 1990. Today, we got started digging up the T-Rex. We couldn't use a big machine to move the rock and dirt. A machine might break or crush the fossils. So we did all the work by hand. Wow, I can't even imagine. Let's look at these words, fossils. Earlier, we learned that Sue found bones sticking out of a cliff. And they showed us the picture. Now they're using the word fossils. And we know they want to dig up the bones. So the word fossils must be another word for bones. Let's move on. Metal bars helped us pull away large rocks. We used picks to break up smaller rocks and shovels to move dirt. I know that if I was there, I would be really afraid that I would break the bones or do something to them. They must have really known how to do things. They had to work by hand. They used metal bars. What did those metal bars do? That's right, they pulled away large rocks. They used picks to break up smaller rocks. And then they also had to use shovels to move dirt. This must have been a very, very hard job, but I'm guessing they were probably very, very excited to be able to get to all of the rest of the bones or fossils. Let's move on and see if they did. We're on to a couple of days later. August 18th, 1990. Our hard and skillful work over the past few days finally paid off. Today, we got down to the fossils. They must have been extremely excited. I'm going to put a happy face there. Then... We had to be even more careful. Uh-oh. 
We use small hand tools to remove the dirt and rock around the bones. So I'm guessing the tools had to be even smaller than what they were using. Okay, and a couple of days later, we're at August 21st, 1990. While we worked, Pete told us about other T-Rex fossils that people have found. Some finds were just a few bones. No known T-Rexes have even half their bones. But it looks like Sue found almost a whole skeleton. Wow, when I think about that entry, I can't even imagine how they must have felt. Before this, they only found bones here and there. And I think that's why the author puts the word finds in quotations. I think the author's trying to tell us that they weren't really big finds. They were just a few bones. Let's move on and see if they finally dig these up. Oh, here's our picture. And I'm seeing much smaller tools that they're using. Look at these tiny tools. It says, Sue used tools to carefully remove rocks and dirt from the fossils. Those are really tiny and it, boy, it must have taken hours and hours and hours. That was very hard work. And I'm going to draw a lot of sweat drops coming because they were out there in the hot sun also. Okay, let's see what we have here. This is another picture. And this time we have a gentleman. I'm wondering if that's Pete. It says, we removed rocks and dirt from S Sue's skull. Wow, they're digging up the skull now. Let's continue on. August 23rd, 1990. Pete dug out the skull today. It's almost five feet long. Oh, wow. Five feet long. You have a few teachers around Rimfire Elementary School that are about that tall, boys and girls. Can you imagine a head? that big. <clears throat> Let's continue. He thinks that this T-Rex was a giant. <clears throat> its bones are bigger than any T-Rex he has seen. Wow. My reaction to that is, wow. Here's the word giant again. What are some synonyms for the word giant? Remember, synonyms are words that mean the same. That's right. One of the words that we mentioned earlier was gigantic. Okay, let's continue on to September 1st, 1990. Boy, they have been at this for a long time, many weeks. We left the dig today. It took 17 days to dig up Sue. The bones are finally on their way to the lab. We took extra special care packing them up. They will take a long time to clean up the skeleton but Sue will make a fine museum exhibit one day. Wow, so they did all of that work and someday Sue will be able to be seen by the public in a museum. There are quite a lot of museum exhibits that show dinosaur exhibits, such as the Museum of Natural History in New York. So let's think about what was the central idea of this story. 
We know that it was written in the form of a diary. We also know that it was nonfiction text, meaning that it was a real story. And we know it took place in the 1990s. That was a long time ago. Okay, boys and girls, I want you to think about what was the central idea or what the text was mostly about. Think about this for a minute or two before you go on to your written comprehension. And I will see you over there when we are ready to complete our comprehension questions.